The Nagoya Sun finally came out, and everyone seemed to get excited. Starting with Ishida, who packs quite a punch with his impact, but eyed Kaisei's great girth and thought, why bother? I got in well there, said the chiseled little man. Four straight wins is a real lift, and my physical condition is improving too. And maybe such flying feats were rehearsed on the practice dohyo this morning, when preparing colleague Hakuho for a certain type of fight. Stablemate Enho also entertained in one of several bouts which required the judge's opinion. No complaints, said the lightweight after his top knot was judged to have touched down first. I want to be more solid from now on, because right now, I'm only performing in fits and starts, and that's why my form has been indifferent. The Aichi locals only have one salaried man to truly claim as their own, Kaisho, who had ridden their wave of support to win five of his opening six. Today he faced Bushozan from Ibaraki, and thus without vocal backing. Bushozan's <laughs> ploy to avoid the left grip failed, and the old ladies erupted in joy. My strong impact and belt grip turned it, said Kaisho, and every extra win gives me something bigger to build on in September. Today, incidentally, marked 10 years since the start of his Masters 140th and final tournament as Kaio. Today was also Chiyono Kuni's 31st birthday, while yesterday saw the birth of his second child and first daughter. Could the man from Mie make it a triple celebration against the fighter stepping up from Division 2, Kyok Taisei? Yes, he could, when his underused belt skills underwrote his failed investment in a standard push and pull. I'll be giving my all to make this a good year, Chionokuni said, in response to umpteen leading questions. Prior to that epic final bout, the best one was surely between Chionokuni's Mie colleague Shimano Umi and Georgian Tochinoshin. Oh, he got his underarm grip. But there was no way he was getting the overarm, was Shima's simple explanation of the win. <laughs> Tamawashi, suffering a mid-tournament blip, had the judges on their feet again, and perhaps exploring the option of wearable chairs. I felt I stayed in as I'd pushed him all the way, said Tamawashi of the call in his favour. He just doesn't let you get settled, and always closes down the space you try to create, which is superb really, said an admiring Chiona Or after a fifth defeat in seven. Waka Takakage and Meisei are debuting at Komusubi together this time, and their sense of rivalry is acute, as this latest bout more than showed. I could attack well from down low, said Waka. I didn't intend to cut inside like that, and my head just flew off course, was Meisei's take on defeat. Don't worry, we'll get to it soon. 
The biggest confidence boost today arguably came to Mitake Umi. As ever, he took a volley of shots, but persisted in moving right until he got the downward thrusting angle for a second straight win over Dai Eisho, having lost the four bouts before that. Having deserved fines for underpowered sumo two days straight, Ichinojo owed the fans a strong showing in the match sumo chiefs were too scared to arrange in May. For the fear... that quivering Ozeki Shodai would lose it like that. I just fell into his stance, Shodai tutted. I wanted to hold out a bit more by not letting his right inside, but was obsessed with slashing inside myself. That's what I aimed for, said Ichinojo, not letting him inside. Which all begs the question, what was he aiming for yesterday? His grateful conqueror yesterday, Teruno Fuji, had actually lost his first two bouts to Koto Eko when injured. <laughs> but he's now won their last two. The second of those, in his words, with a nice tight grip which had me resolved to drive him out. Nothing complex about that game plan. Which meant that Hakuho was tasked with keeping pace in the day's closer against flying monkey Tobizaru. Come on, you knew it would be this kind of bout. And after something akin to a drunken August bond dance, Hakuho made it 52 wins from 56 first meetings since reaching Yokozuna 14 years ago. How Tobizaru sought to prolong that first precious night on stage with the greatest sumo performer of his generation. In the end, the monkey cared not for being thrown, for at least that would guarantee he was touched by greatness. Palpitations, was how Tobizaru described his on-stage feeling. I attacked as prudently as I could because if I'd gone in too hard with the thrusts, he'd just have gripped my belt earlier and thrashed me. No comment tonight from Hakuho, who remains quietly content with having passed a decent test of stamina. Tobizaru, I think, told us all we need to know. He makes himself big and is always one move ahead. Now, where have I seen that Tobizaru pose before? Ah, that must be it.